Hey guys, welcome back. The next video coming up here is all about casting for walleye on Lake Erie and specifically fishing uh, casting spinners or weapons they're called and a weapon is basically just a single hook crawler harness and it's casted and basically you're drifting and you're casting parallel to the waves as you're drifting and fishing your lure around it's called fishing the swing so this western basin of lake erie is really unique you have huge schools of walleye that are just roving open water feeding on emerald shiners and gizzard shad mostly and uh these fish are subject to uh being caught casting uh which is really cool you know a lot of places you're fishing structure for walleye you're jigging fish in the bottom uh, but eerie a lot of times these fish are suspended or right near the surface and they're just actively feeding so there's obviously different techniques you can use to catch walleye trolling is really popular on eerie too and it's very effective most days in terms of just putting fish in the boat trolling is probably more effective but casting is just way more fun it's it's so awesome to feel that bite and uh, just so much more fun being one-on-one -on -one engaged with that fish when they take your rig um, but I'll show you the rig this is the actual rig I was fishing in the video right here and uh, we have a, a three-quarter ounce egg sinker at the top here and the whole rig is tied with 15 pound fluorocarbon and at the top we just have a just a simple overhand loop knot here and you can see I put a bead in the loop when I tied it up and the reason you put that bead there is because you actually put the whole loop right through a egg sinker this is a three-quarter ounce egg sinker and that bead keeps that egg sinker from sliding down your rig um, so you got you got a stopper or a bead for a stopper on one side and you have a snap swivel tied directly to your line on the other side. So the whole rig is, I'd say about 15 to 18 inches here. And we have a little gold hammered Indiana blade. I think that's a number three or four Indiana blade. I'm not sure. Um, and then we have a, that's attached to a clevis here. One thing, uh, I want to tell you about clevises is uh, with this when you're fishing this rig uh, the details are really important I think anyway to get the right presentation so there are some plastic quick change clevises that you will that allow you to change blades while you're fishing to switch to a different blade color I do not recommend those I've tested them a bunch of times and they just simply do not spin as well as a standard metal clevis so get some standard just this is just a folded metal clevis and that's what you want these these spin the rotation is going to be a lot better underneath that uh, i just have a little gold metal bead and underneath that we have five uh plastic beads that were actually gold but uh i, I caught so many fish on this rig that uh, i actually they chewed the the gold plating right off these beads which isn't really a big deal um, but these were gold and the idea behind the beads is when your blade hangs you want your blade kind of right at the top of your hook the bottom of your blade should be right at the top of your hook there so when that spins because you're gonna have a piece of crawler like half of a night crawler tipped on this hook and you don't want your blade to hit the crawler um, you want it like I said, you want the bottom, just how this one's set up right here. This is perfect. You want the bottom of the blade right about at the eye of your hook. And this is just a number two Gamakatsu octopus hook tied on at the bottom. And again, you're going to tip that with about half of a crawler. And that's it. Pretty simple rig. Um, is fluorocarbon necessary? Uh, probably not. You could probably use standard mono. But um, I do think the fluorocarbon will get you more bites. It's just my opinion. But uh, if all you have is mono, go ahead and tie it up with mono. Not a big deal. Um, the weight size depends on the wind and how fast you're drifting. I typically have used anything from a three-quarter ounce, which is what this is, down to a quarter ounce when there was barely any wind. 
Um, so that's generally the range you want to be fishing. The day uh, of this video, we had a lot of wind, and uh, so I went with the three quarter ounce. And I'm going to talk about it more as we get the video rolling here. Um, but what you what you basically want to do is you're casting straight off the boat either straight off the bow or straight off the stern this uh in the video i'm fishing the stern of the boat and you want to cast parallel to the waves straight off the back of the boat and you want to just slowly fish this rig around the swing and uh, fish it around that turn it's going to end up upwind of you um almost straight up wind to you but it's it's when that rig is coming around the swing right when it starts to pull and you're working it really slow and it's just fluttering there that's usually when they're going to grab it and with a three quarter ounce sinker um we were fishing you know maybe around 28 30 feet of water and i was starting my retrieve uh, at like eight seconds so as soon as the rig hits the water you start counting Eight seconds later, um, I was starting my retrieve, but a slow retrieve. So basically, as you're coming around that 45, this thing's basically at or near the bottom. And it's just kind of fluttering there. And then as it comes around the swing, it's going to it's gonna work back up to the boat. So we'll get the video rolling here. These mosquitoes are eating me alive here. I'm doing the best I can. You know, if you guys are new to fishing Erie or you just want to see someone else's take on it, I hope this video will be interesting to you guys and help you out. So here we go. I'm gonna slow this first cast way down for you so it can go into a little more depth in the presentation here. I am fishing a six foot G Loomis rod here, medium action. And the length isn't super important. I prefer a shorter rod, but uh, you do want a good sensitive graphite rod for this because these walleye bite really light. A lot of times you just kind of hold it. Uh, so you want a good rod. But anyway, obviously we're drifting downwind. I'm fishing the stern. I'm casting straight off the back of the boat. You can see my rig hit the water there. And once it hits the water, uh, I'm letting it sink for about eight seconds. And then I'm keeping my rod tip high and I'm just slowly turning that reel and I'm letting that spinner fall through the water column as it's pulling around the swing and uh, it's going to end up upwind. Um, but as it starts to come around the swing and pull harder, I actually slow down my retrieve to the point where I actually just kind of hold it and let it flutter there. And you're going to see very shortly here, I'm going to hit a walleye just kind of holding it there just letting it flutter and boom that fish grabbed it right there so that's the idea um, basically flipping it right off the back of the boat and uh, turning that reel a little bit at first but as your rig comes around into the wind and it starts to really pull you just want to almost just hold it or barely turn your reel um, if the wind's blowing really hard uh, you may have to adjust your cast and cast a little more downwind uh, if it's really light wind, you may have to cast a little more upwind. Otherwise, you're just going to be like, you don't want to be dragging right on bottom. Um, you want that, that rig coming around the swing and uh, kind of working through the entire water column so you're not just dredging zebes. But a little different perspective here. You can see how slow I'm turning my reel handle there. And boom, there's another fish right there. Just as it's starting to pull hard around the swing.
Okay, so obviously I missed a fish there and I was disappointed, but when you're doing this type of spinner fishing, you always want to drop it right back to them. If you get a swing and a miss on a fish, just drop your rod tip right back to them and just hang it there again. And a lot of times they'll come back for it, which this fish does right there. And I stuck him good that time. Uh, unfortunately, it's a big sheepy and not a walleye and he came back for it, but the walleye will do that a lot as well. This clip I'm going to zoom in on my rod tip because you can actually see when the walleye picks it up and it's just going to load up a little bit almost like I snagged on something. If you watch the tip of my rod right there it just loads up and that fish is there that's actually a good walleye and that's a pretty typical walleye bite. A lot of times uh, they just kind of pick it up and hold it and uh, it's a really light bite that's why you need a good sensitive rod but as always hook sets are free so if uh, you feel something a little different uh, just set the hook and uh, give it to them but the moral of the story is just work it really slow guys um, if you think you're working it slow enough work it slower and uh, these fish really just want that spinner just kind of fluttering as it's either falling or rising through the water column so the rest of the video is just uh, Ronnie and I hammering walleye on weapons. So hopefully this is helpful to you guys. Uh, you can see that's another nice keeper there. And uh, enjoy the rest of the video. Too. 
Yeah, right in the corner of the mouth. What? Feels like a good one. I don't know, it's acting weird though, man. No, I think it's a gator, but if it's a perch, it's a freaking monster. <laughs> That's a good walleye, man. Whoa, you all right? That flew out of there. It's a good one. It's a mighty wallabus. Oh, he's got some color to him. The northern boy. Oh, he swallowed it too. Woo. the boot. Drop a marker right here. <laughs> they got King Dong Wallabus on. 25 incher. No, but it's a good one, I think. Heartbreaker. Heartbreaker. <laughs> yeah, baby. Get some sexy. Really. 